Hi, it's Sora here from Wizards Code. What are we going to do today? We're going to create this game. It's a simple hunting game, first person shooter, uses mostly free and open source assets, a couple of paid ones in here, but not too much. And at the end of it, about 10 hours time, you're going to have a full game. Let's get going. So the first thing we're going to do is get our terrain. So on the Wizards Code uh, GitHub repository, we have a terrains repo. And inside there, you'll find a whole load of terrains. Not that many right now, but it's going to be building up. We're going to check that out into our project and then come back in a few moments. Once we have the terrains from the Wizard Code GitHub repo imported into a project, we're going to set up the linear color space. And then we'll set it up for deferred rendering. Now that we have our terrain imported into the project, we'll click through into the terrains folder. And inside there, we will be able to navigate to the terrain we want to use for this project. And it is this one here, the hunter scene. And we can see it here, it's got a number of assets in here. They're all free and open source, so you can use these to do what you want. Great way to get started quickly and easily. This is a fairly big terrain, two kilometers by two kilometers. Not a huge amount of detail in it, but a good blank canvas for you to work from. Now we're going to install Neo FPS. This is a paid asset. There is no equivalent open source one that I can find. Love to know in your comments if you're aware of one. But this asset is really powerful, really flexible, and most important, is highly modular. So we'll be able to replace all sorts of components in here with other components to integrate into our own work. So this is a great centerpiece for our work. Let's go ahead and install that. If you want more information about how to install it, I have a couple of other videos. And of course, Neo FPS has some great tutorials and documentation too. Next up, we're going to want to add a deer into our scene. And the terrains module that we put in before, that brings some models, including some animals with it. I'm probably going to move these out of this section and put them into their own repository at some point in the future. But for now, they're pulled in along with the terrains. So we'll place this deer in the scene. And then when we hit play, we'll have a deer standing in front of us, ready to be hunted. Next, we're going to import Emerald AI. Now, this is another paid asset, but we do plan to get rid of this later on. So why am I using it now? Well, two reasons. Firstly, although it's a paid asset, it's really good to get going with. It has some limitations and will outgrow those limitations quite quickly. But to get started, it's really good value for money and I can strongly recommend it. You might even choose to keep it. So let's get going with Emerald AI. OK, now we need to make the deer enabled by Emerald AI. I'm not going to go into detail here. I have another video. Just search for Emerald AI or check the link up above and you'll be able to find it. One of the challenges we're going to have by using these open source assets is that there's not a lot of that animations with this model. That's not a problem while we're in prototype phase. Initially, it's going to look kind of weird, but we'll improve on it as we iterate as we go by. So just bear with it. I will show you in another video um, a really cheap set of assets that you can get for just $5 that has an excellent pair of deers in it and has lots of animations and so on. But for now, we're sticking as close as we can to the use free and open source assets. We will do what we can with the minimal animations we have available. If you are trying to follow along with this and you can't quite figure out how to set up this deer, do leave a message and ask me to set up a longer tutorial. I do have the full video. I could edit it for you if need be. Once you're all set up, let's move on. OK, so we have our deer, but it's not being damaged. To damage it, we're going to need Neo FPS integration. And the great news there is that the wonderful Chris from Yonder Noughts Games, the publisher of Neo FPS, has provided us with a package on GitHub. So go grab that. Information is in the documentation, but the URL is on the screen and then import it into your project. Now in Emerald AI, we're using the nav mesh to control motion. So that means we have to go and bake our nav mesh for the terrain. So that's our next task. See you in a moment. Now with the nav mesh baked, we can hit play and our deer will wander around. Now the animation looks pretty awful as I warned you early on. I actually realize later on and you'll see later on that this is a run animation and I'm playing it on a walk speed, which makes it look even worse, but it'll do for now. 
Now that our deer is moving, it's time to set up Neo FPS. So we'll need the Neo FPS Emerald AI damage handler script. We'll also need the Neo FPS async load fixer, a standard basic health manager from Neo FPS, and a standard simple surface, which we're going to set to flesh. Okay, we're going to want to put our deer on the default layer so that we can see it with the weaponry physics. And then we'll open up the Emerald AI system and go into detection and tags where we're going to make sure that the AI can actually see the player. So to do that, we are going to go to the detection layers and ensure we have character controllers and we'll turn off the default water. And we're going to make the follower tag untagged so that the deer does not think that the player is a friendly. And then if I could shoot straight, we would have a deer that will die when we kill it. Excellent. So now we can create a prefab out of our deer that's almost complete. And once we have our prefab, we can create a whole new load of them, put maybe five or six in a herd and then duplicate the herd six or seven times. And then when we hit play, we have a whole herd of deer in front of us. I realized that I hadn't included the hood. So type hood into the search bar look for the one that says hood and menu canvas and simply drag that in there we go hit play and we can now see the health and ammo and so on for our weapon now it was at this point that i realized i was getting an unassigned reference exception on this current target in the emerald ai system so i spent a little time debugging it uh, it was a little hard to track down. Um, ultimately, what it means is our AI was not getting a current target. There is a passive target as well. And because I'm using a passive AI, um, current target was not being set. The easy fix was to create a null guard and just return zero from the offending method. I'm not sure what the side effects of that are, but it seems to work. I have notified the publisher via their Discord channel and we'll see what they say. Hopefully, it will be fixed in a future release if it truly is a bug. Now, at this point, we were getting to an almost playable game, but it was a little bit one-sided. Having an assault rifle against a small pack of deer that are not yet running away from you, well, it wasn't much of a challenge. So. This was where I started to get into configuring the default Neo FPS. So the first thing I needed to do was make a prefab, which was a copy of the Neo FPS player that we were currently using. So I simply copied that into my own prefabs folder. So rename that prefab to something meaningful, like player, actually player character and then make sure that our spawner object is actually using that prefab. Once we've done that, we can go into the prefab and simply remove all of the weapons we don't want the player to have. So I'm going to leave him with the pistol and the sniper, but I'm going to remove everything else. Oh, we'll leave him with the baton as well. So now when we hit play, we only have a limited set of weapons, which are more likely what I... Uh, more like what a hunter would have. Admittedly, still a bit overpowered. Well, talking of overpowered, we need headshots. The deer have way too much of a chance right now. Unfortunately, Emerald AI doesn't allow for location damage, but Yondernaut's Chris provides this file here that has some instructions in it on how to set up the configuration such that you can use the Neo FPS location damage mechanisms. And that's what I'm doing here and we'll set up a collider on the deer's head and when all that is done we'll have something that looks something like this aim carefully fire done now we're set up to do the location damage we can do as much as we want we can add body and chest hitboxes legs neck put different amounts of damage on each of these and have different effects when we hit if we want to so Let's do a bunch of those. At this point, it's really unfair on the deer. We've got overpowered weapons. We've got headshots. We can zoom in on them. They don't even run away from us. So let's prepare for when they do run away. 
let's change the hit scan shooter on the weapons to be ballistic shooters. What does that mean? Well, a hit scan just basically fires a ray and says, yes, you hit or no, you didn't. Um, it's not much of a challenge. The ballistic shooter, on the other hand, it calculates for distance and drop. And so it's a lot harder to hit at distance. So when the deer are running away, there'll be a challenge. Let's add the ballistic shooters on. It's really easy to do. You basically just copy the prefab that you are using for the existing weapons, then go in, swap out the hit scan shooter for the ballistic shooter. There's big red warnings all over the place that tells you what you need to set up. Dead simple to do, but if you do need assistance, it is in the documentation for the Neo, Neo FPS asset. Now, once we have the ballistic shooter on and we let the deer run away a fair bit, you'll find that you have to aim above the deer in order to hit him. And how far above you aim depends on how far away the deer is. There we go. We were a few inches above his head there and we did still get a headshot. When you're going into the neck, of course, you can aim a little bit easier. Problem is, when you aim at a neck and hit, there won't be a lot of damage, so you won't get as many points. And here we can see it's really quite difficult to hit them at a distance. And finally, for this video, we are going to set up the flea behavior on the deer. So now that it's harder to shoot them at a distance, we should encourage them to go a distance away from the player. That's what a deer would do if you were trying to kill it. So inside of Emerald AI, there are some settings in the detection area that allow you to change how often it will try to detect the player and also how far away uh, it will see the player and how far away it will run when it detects the player. And so we'll set those up and then have a play around to see what it looks like. And so this is what we have so far. Uh, actually, this is a little more advanced than we've done in this video. I will be doing more videos to add in the rabbits there, for example, and also some other uh, tweaks and improvements to what we did in this. But we've got started and we're very close to what we see here. Uh, the biggest difference, the biggest amount of work is the scoring system. And it's actually the scoring system that I built this game for. I wanted to experiment with the scoring system for my zombies game. And I will be returning to doing the devlogs for the zombies soon. But I'll finish off this piece first. See you soon. Bye bye.